Greater Moja, Brother Khalif, I'm invited. I don't know what that means. Like I said, I'm sitting there. Shout out to Brother Kwame. We're about to jump it off. Let me get this fruit together. Brothers, let me tell you, man. The ancestors have been riding me since about 2 o'clock this morning. I have been up since 2 o'clock this morning. Pining. Pining to get on this on the on, on the air, man. Listen. I did, listen, I've been up. I still running. I'm still running late. I don't understand that shit. Right? Ancestors got me up good and early. Right? Got me up good and early and I'm still running late. Damn. But, you know, we're going to have a great toast this morning. It's a great beginning of the week. It's a great mojo. Good morning to everybody. I'm pouring my, my fruit for the uh, toast. Hotep, brother. Hotep. Peace, love, joy. Peace, power, and joy. <laughs> hey. We about to get it in. I just finished my movement. Um, and uh, Brother Kwame, I had um, mentioned to him on Saturday when I dropped off some stuff for him, the uh, ambrosia for him, I had mentioned a dream that I had because Saturday, we y'all know that I did Saturday. Oh my God. All right, I'm gonna give y'all the push-ups. Give me a second. Uh, all right. Moja, Kudushakli, Ujima, Ujama, Nia, Kuumba, Imani. All right, so. For those that don't know, when you're on the Guzzi Samba Challenge, <laughs> you got to pay a price every time you use the days of the week rather than the principles. But on Kaumba, when I, um, after I did the show, I went back to sleep. And I had a dream, man. And I had to get up and I started texting right after I had the dream. I had a dream about um, Millennium Community School. And basically, what the dream was, was, well, first, let me, let me line it up for you. All right, so I'm doing the 21-day Nguza Saba Challenge. I'm following what my ancestors is telling me. I'm toasting for my ancestors every day. I get into a car accident. So I'm off work. I'm already, I was on vacation. I was off work. Um, it just so happened that the car accident happened then, but then I had to take a whole nother week off. So I stay away from the office, which is hard for me because this is, I mean, my whole family. School is our home. Millennium is our home, right? We, we spend all the time at Millennium Community School, right? So... I get up one day and I have to go by the school. So I go to the school, but stop. Let me stop the story there. All right. So I'm on Facebook and one of my brothers who I can't remember his name right now. It's early in the morning. I'm sorry. Well, anyway, he went through this thing called the Ohio Master Urban Farmer. And he said, brothers, we need to become master urban farmers. It's a program at the Ohio State, um, um, uh, through Ohio State. Um, it costs $175. You, we need to get as many of us through this program as possible. We're teaching you about urban farming. So I, 
I follow I follow up with him. I'm like, shit, that's our interest, urban farming. Because my son just had told me he wanted to be a farmer. And then he also gave me the idea, my son gave me the idea about the bread. He wanted do the bread. He talking about he want to raise bees. He said he want to be a farmer this week. I don't know what he want to be next week, so I'm trying to promote that. But I said, shit, I could do some urban farming myself. Why not? You know, I did a little garden back here. Let me go and find out and learn to master what I'm doing. So I go and I get the application. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. But now that I know that, because I'm going to get more involved with Tawee Village, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, and, um, hell, you know, I'm, I'm coming in. So the whole piece is then I need to learn. So they got this Mastered Urban Farming Workshop Series, right, that I'm signing up for. Now back to my story, Kwame. Now you ready? So I go, I, I get in contact with the dude. I talk with the dude and say, well, I ain't going to be able to drop the 175 all at once. So he, you know, we make a deal. I'm like, cool. So I'm, I have to go up to the school. So I go up to the school, I walk into, I mean, literally, I, I live at this school. I'm here all the time. I've been gone for a week and a half. I walk into the school, and as I walk into the school, I see a light in the hallway that I never, that, that I never saw before. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking because, you know, this is my place. I'm looking, and I look around the corner, and there is a vertical garden in the fucking hallway. It's three of them in the hallway with the lights, with greens growing on them. And I'm looking at this shit, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. My ancestors don't listen. So I'm talking about taking an urban farming thing. I don't even know about what's going on in school. I walk into the school. There's a there's a program called Urban Gems that 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 they got while I was out while I was out sick. So now they got vertical gardens in the school. So I'm looking up like, fuck! I just signed up for the urban farmer piece. So I so on Kaumba, I get up. I do the show. I'm excited. I go to sleep. And I have a dream that we took a room in the Millennium Community School and packed it with those vertical gardens and grew enough food up in there to provide salads every day for the students in the school would save money on the budget. And then not only did we have a room but outside the door of the room, we had erected a greenhouse so that we can grow shit all year around. So now, not only were we able to feed the kids at the school, we were able to do a monthly farmer's market out of the school with vendors, whether they was farm, whether they had uh, produce or other things, they could sell stuff up out the school. Now. This was the this was now this is the this is the dopest part of the dream now because we only go up to eighth grade but we were able to open a private high school no not not public but a private high school within our school where the uh the high school students curriculum was basically computer based but they paid for their tuition to go to our private school by working the garden at the school. So not only were they going to school, but they was working for the school. And not only was we doing the garden there, but we also had the G and J brewery up in that motherfucker too. But this this is just a dream. It's just a dream. I'm just a dreamer, right? But we're gonna see. Right? We're going to see, right? Because I'm sitting up here, look. I'm looking at this shit like, listen. Vertical farms, those that don't know, look that shit up. Right? Look that shit up. Vertical farms, you can stack that shit up to eight foot tall and have greens growing up. You know what I'm saying? And you can have, put about 50 of them in a room. You could feed, you could feed 600 people. You talk about culture? We talking about culture? 
Culture come from the land, family. Culture come from being able to provide food, family. Right? And we got all this modern technology and we sitting up here struggling and shit. Brother Kwame say, no, my brother, you are far more than a dreamer. You make shit happen. It's what I love about you. My wife is the same way. Man, dude, we got them. I mean, because if we don't, we're going to die. On, I mean, you know what I'm saying? This shit is, this shit is getting serious, right? We are, and, 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 I, and my ancestors yelling at me while I'm sitting up taking a bath this morning. It's like, listen, family, they, they telling me, they saying, you ain't got no, y'all ain't got no culture. Y'all got a consensus. I said, what? I'm sitting up like, what? We ain't got a culture no more. We got a consensus, right? We want everybody to agree with us. Part of culture is that it's supposed to be people outside the shit. No, everybody's not supposed to understand the motherfucking culture. Only people in the culture are supposed to understand the culture. You know what I'm saying? But no, as black folks, we want everybody to understand. We don't mind that everybody could come in and, and, and just put a couple of inflections on their words and all of a sudden they get a ghetto pass. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Go to Chinatown and try that shit. You know what I'm saying? Go, you know what I'm saying? Go, go, go really, go to Chinatown and 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 and, 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 and um, try to speak like them and, and see if them motherfuckers give you respect and give you a ghetto pass in, in Chinatown. Shit ain't gonna happen. Try the Korea time. You know what I'm saying? Try that shit in little Cuba or something. You know what I'm saying? Try that, try that, try that, try that shit anywhere else. But you come to you come to one of our churches. You come to we got a consensus because we want everybody to like us. Fuck that. We don't need to be liked no more. You know what I'm saying? If 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 y'all liking us mean that you gonna keep on mistreating us, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? I got kids. I want my kids to grow up safe. If that means that everybody on this motherfucking planet got to hate me, right? In order for my kids to feel safe, then that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Fear me. Hate me, you know what I'm saying? Leave my motherfucking kids alone and leave my kids' friends alone. How about that? Leave everybody in my motherfucking tribe alone. See, now, when you have a culture, y'all you, understand that, right? We understand that those of us that's in the culture, those of us that, that's not in the culture that want a consensus and we want everybody to, to love us for our humanity and shit. Listen, family, nobody's going to love you more than you love yourself, ever, nor should they. You know what I'm saying? Nor should they. You know what I'm saying? They'll violate your borders like they do us. Right? You name, go, go to any black neighborhood, go to the corner store and see who owns that motherfucker. It's a border violator. You know what I'm saying? Y'all sitting up here, I mean, really, people get upset with Donald Trump for saying that shit. Right? But he got enough sense to understand that he has to protect what he calls his borders. We don't. Let me go and drink my water. I'm pissed off right now. Pissed off. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting up here, man. My. Uh, all right. So make sure y'all drink your water with me. I'm going for 32 ounces this morning. You know, I did a short show about the archetypes yesterday. And, you know, I kind of felt like I robbed the folks because I was trying to get out to get to the divine conversation and it was real good when i got there so family you know um i'm gonna start letting y'all know about a lot of stuff that's going on as far as the tawi village we need to really start surrounding these elders and really start um supporting some of the stuff that's going on the kwanzas the the the, the celebrations that's going on because um these elders have showed some consistency um they have the organization um, we need to really start building up around shit like this. You know what I'm saying? Especially around these holidays. You know what I'm saying? So drink that water. Come on. That's eight ounces. That's 16 ounces. 
and it's our age group who really needs to begin stepping up around. Hell yeah. It's all right. You damn right. You know what I'm saying? It's our turn. God damn. It's our turn. Right? It's our turn. We're, we're approaching. We're approaching. We're, we're stepping on the fringes. I'm, like I said, man, I, in seven months, I will be 50. 50. Right? You know, see, and this is part of my frustration, right? I, uh, it's like, we don't mind, it, this hit me along with the consensus, not having culture, we got a consensus, right, we just want everybody to agree with us, everybody, everybody to fit in, and just humanity, shit, fuck that, right, you know what I'm saying, people will love you, will love you for loving you, right, because when you love you, you can love others, but when you can't love you, how the fuck are you supposed to love somebody else? But excuse my language. But I also came up with to this point this morning in my wake up. Get ready for this one. For a long time, I've been saying that black folks are closet atheists. Because there's no way that we could do half the shit that we do and talk about we believe in an omnipresent, all-powerful, all-knowing God. There's no way. There's no way that we can actually do Half the shit we do, talking about we are this, we are the most spiritual people on the planet. There's no motherfucking way. You know what I'm saying? Either, either we don't really believe in God, right? Or, and this is the other one, we don't really believe that God is like us. So, because at one point in time, you would say, well, we believe this a white man is God. No. It ain't even just that no more. It's right. It's either God is East Asian or God is West Asian. God is anything but us. So either we don't believe or we believe in a God that is not like us. So we can just whatever the fuck we want. And then on top of that, this whole grace thing. I'm just being honest with y'all. And I know some of y'all going to get mad at me. This whole grace thing has really fucked us up. Because we... Take advantage of grace, right? We will fuck up our whole lives. And then at the end of life, be like, oh, Jesus, oh, Allah, save me. And it's supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming from a framework where I, we need old, we need old fashioned African God. It, dude, you fuck up, you done. It's a, if either your heart is light as a feather or nigga, you getting ate up by the alligator, the funny looking thing back here to look like an alligator. You know what I'm saying? Getting shit out. You know what I'm saying? Um, we morph into the culture of the people whose religion we practice. You damn right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We 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 transform. You know what I'm saying? And see, this is what people don't understand. This is what people don't understand. Religion is culture. <laughs> Y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it. You see what I'm saying? Religion rises up out the culture. Religion is part of culture. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, we we the only motherfuckers that you know. So I could take a little bit of this. I could take a little bit of that. I could take a little bit of that. I could take a little bit of the comedic. I could take a little. You know what I'm saying? We the only motherfuckers taking a little bit of dashing. We dash our culture. You know what I'm saying? We 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 do our culture just like we allow them to do our food. We get pieces of the nutrition. Right? We don't get the whole, we don't get the whole wheat. We get a piece of the wheat and it's bleached and shit. You know what I'm saying? We don't get the whole goddamn thing. Religion is culture. Religion is culture. It comes from culture. Goddamn, you, you look at, look at Christianity. Where did Christianity come from? Look at Islam. Where did Islam come from? come from a culture they come from cultures and we keep fooling ourselves we keep checking ourselves we keep allowing ourselves to fall into the same bullshit traps the same play on words and we and we allow we let me drink my water i mean it's so frustrating man it's so frustrating right 
and we allow everybody else to 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 violate us, but we'll check each other. Let me. I'm gonna go back. I did the whole energy deregulation thing. Beautiful business called Ambit, right? I did Ambit, right? Now, and I need y'all to understand this. Those that don't know me, right? Those that don't know me, right? I'm I'm born in Akron. I came to Columbus at about 18 years old, maybe 19. I was about 19 years old. I came to Columbus to go to Ohio State. I received a, a academic scholarship to Ohio State. Um, it's pure love. Just I'm, I'm being honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Pure ancestral intercession. Right, because I'm not the most brilliant motherfucker on this planet. You know what I'm saying? But I do have a knack of being in the right place at the right time, right, and knowing the right people. And thank God I have I had um, elders who taught me how to talk to people, right, and that opens a lot of doors. Well, I've been helping motherfuckers in Columbus since I was 19 years old. I've been putting my life on the line for niggas. I've been I've been marching with niggas. I've been taking up for motherfuckers and father fuckers for a long time. Right? I've been pulling money out of my pocket. I've been feeding people all over this city. Right? I'm not one of those that's been running around borrowing shit from people and not paying people back. I'm not one of those that's been taking advantage of people. I'm not one of those that's been robbing people. I'm not one of those that's been pimping and, and trying to take advantage of motherfuckers' young daughters and shit. I've been the one that's been stepping up for them and looking out for them. Real talk. Now, I come around. I do this Amber piece. Right? And, 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 and I just let me just explain. Right? So it's about deregulation. And you just transfer your energy to Ambit and the organization that I was doing it for as far as it was Giami Journey, right, would, would receive a portion of the money that you would pay to your electric bill, right? But your bill would be the same or lower. But I wouldn't come to you and be like, your bill's going to be lower because I understand how these businesses work. Right, because they'll come in, they'll tell you your, your bill is going to be lower. Your bill, most of the time, won't be that much lower. So I'm not going to sit up there and lie to you. So I got motherfuckers getting mad at me. Talking about I just want their money. Wait a minute. You know, when you needed money, I gave you money. When you needed something to eat or a place to come and chill, I gave you a place to chill. Now you mad at me because I'm asking you to take a bill that you pay every month anyway and transfer it to a business that'll benefit a group that was helping you in the first motherfucking place. But then I turn around to find out my people got direct energy. I said, man, the fuck? Direct energy? Or you got a bag of grippos that you walked down to the corner store and gave it gave the money to the Arab. Or you got some rims that you got, you know what I'm saying, financed uh, um, through some bank by owned by some other people. Or you got a fucking black and mild in your mouth that you bought from an Indian store. Or you got some fucking hair in your head that you bought from some fucking Asians. People wonder and got the and want to wonder why Brother High Tim be running around here mad and just be avoiding. I be avoid motherfucker sometimes because I be I be trying to be peaceful and shit. You know what I'm saying? But then when I find out that motherfuckers is they're mad at me. You're mad at me? Right? Wow. Wow. Nigga, all you gotta do is tell me no and keep it moving. <laughs> That's it. But you mad at me because I'm trying to build something on and this is the framework that I'm trying to build from. We have to have something as a people 
that we could plug into that we use anyway. Maybe you don't understand. All right. Every culture of people have certain things that they dominate. It's certain things that they control. It's certain things that they will only buy from themselves. We don't have that as black folks. Because we buy everything from everybody. It don't matter. There's nothing sacred to us. Right? Do, do y'all not understand that the whole Halal thing is an Arab Islamic thing? Or that the whole um, um, kosher thing is a is a Jewish control piece where it's only certain meats that their people are allowed to eat because it has to be certified by them. It's a certifying body that benefits that culture. Y'all don't see that? You know, you know. Maybe I'm too old. You know, I'm sorry. This is gonna tell you. I, I damn. I'm. For those that don't know, I'm doing rhodiola. Man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The ancestors have been riding me all morning, man. I'm sorry. I didn't mean, you know, because the whole the whole piece is, man. We'll have to rap about that. Charlotte handles our utilities, but we... Oh, dude, I had to stop. I, I, I had to stop. Because this is the whole piece. I had to stop. I said, fuck it. I'm investing all my time in the ambrosia. Why, this is why, right? Ambrosia, we I, we could totally control that, right? We could get beehives. We could grow the herbs. You know what I'm saying? We already got all the scobies. We got the scobies. We got we got the cultures to start growing the scobies. It's just a matter of one getting enough people to start drinking on a regular basis, and then we'll be able to move into getting a a, a more secure space where I could teach young people how to do it. We could control the business from the beginning to the end. We go and buy us uh, some land with some water on it, get the water out, use fresh spring water to make it. You know what I'm saying? We could have the land. We could grow some of the herbs that we use to put in it. You know what I'm saying? We could have the land. We could have the bees to make the honey that, that could produce it. So I got something we could control from the rooter to the tutor. You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I left left the Amber business alone because I'm like, boom, it was it, it's it was so easy. You know what I'm saying? And it's you know, and it, and it, and it, and I'm I'm cool, I'm cool. Other people could do that. There's other people out here that's doing that. They could do that. I got something else, and people support me. I got family that support me. I got two orders. I got one order. I'm shipping out to Arizona today. I got another one that I um that somebody's coming to get today. So is moving you know what i'm saying but the piece that i was the, the 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 point that i'm trying to make is that we will support anything that don't look like us and and but for a lot of y'all i'm preaching to the choir y'all already know this you know what i'm saying but i have to constantly remind y'all because when 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 up uh, when we ain't around and not looking at this right the way i'm sharing it now other people coming on because i'm seeing like a lot of people popping up and checking out the daily toast now <clears throat> I understand I'm simply looking for ways to circulate the dollar within our own that's true so <clears throat> there's still people within 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 my tribe that's still doing it right I just had to stop because it was twenty six dollars a month coming out that I could have that could be redirected towards what I'm doing because if I can't do it 100 percent I'm not gonna do it right I couldn't do it 100 percent but even when I was trying to do it 100 percent I was just letting people know the shit that I'm that I'm running into right I mean it's just it's, it's just ridiculous right and it would and, and Kwame this is the issue it wouldn't it wouldn't be it wouldn't be folk like you I'm talking about individuals who actually laid up in my motherfucking house for months See, you got people got to understand, dude. Between between 1989, between 1989 and possibly uh, Cleve is 13 years old. Cleve came over here at three, so Cleve is 10 years ago. From 1989 to 2007, right? 
I've been a soldier in this motherfucker. I've been, I've been, you, you know what I'm saying? So when you call people, and you know what I'm saying? And it's like, boom, where's the honor? Where's the loyalty? Where's the sacrifice? You know what I'm saying? We ain't even got to be in the same club to understand that shit. That's the only thing, that's the only point I'm trying to make. Right? When it comes to us, we don't got it. But we loyal as fuck at our jobs. And they'll let you off in a second. Right? We're loyal to everything else. But our own. Right? So, um, I'm sorry. Great emoji. <laughs> Great emoji. The day is emoji. I found my cheat sheet. My wife hid it from me. Uh, the day is the day of unity. Um, the modic principle of the day is truth. The color is violet. The hermetic law is mentalism. Um, I got some other stuff that I got from um, the the group that um, Kwame invited me to. Um, where's my back? I gotta find it. Um, but it's some excellent information because it's some more things that line up with the principles of the day. And I'm gonna start sharing that. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start sharing that stuff. All right. So what we're gonna do right now? What I got right here. This is a very, very special, special piece to me. Right. This right here is peach ambrosia. So let's check it out. Oh, oh Lord, have mercy. Ah, uh, well. Look like that peach. Ooh. Let's see. Y'all can hear porn, right? Oh my God, look at that. Yeah. All right, that's that peach. So first, give an honor to the creator by whatever name you choose. Oh my fault, bring them out, bring them out. 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 Right. So, I'm experimenting with this peach ambrosia. We call on the creator by whatever name you choose to call the creator. We call that great energy down upon us. We know that it's already with us. We know that it's already in us. We know that it's all the way, always all around us. So we call on that energy and we ask that energy to bless us by whatever name you choose to call this energy. We toast and we lift up our glass and we say ashe. From there, we move to our personal ancestors. Family, this is the most important thing that we do every day because we got to salute our ancestors, man. We got to salute our personal ancestors because they are the ones that come running for us when we are in danger. They're the ones that come, that they're the ones that interceding for us, right? They are the ones that made it made it possible for me to get in Ohio State with uh, 3.1, you know what I'm saying, and make it all the way through for free. They, they are the ones that provided me with, I never really had to go on a real job interview. You understand what I'm saying? They, I'm, I'm, so when I'm talking about these ancestors and I'm talking about these ancestral intercessions, I'm letting y'all know that the ancestors really work, man. It's just a matter of us lifting them up. Lift up your ancestors, right? So we lift up our glass and we toast our ancestors. We call on our personal ancestors. I'm going to call on my personal line. If you have something that you want me to go on and toast for you, I'll do it. But if not, toast your own right now. Lift up your glass. I call on Miles Brown, Miss Ann, Robert of Texana Davis, Herman Brown Sr., Rosalie Tilly. George and William Walton, Chris and Fanny Gasson, Aunt Lena, Uncle Chris, um, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, um, Margaret Ellis, Wash Ellis, Cecil Ellis, um, um, Herman Brown the uh, second, Avira Brown, Gina Gaines, my Aunt Barbara, did I get all that? John Fillard. Jamon Jones, Montague Pittman L. Elder Millie Dixon. I found her name. Elder Millie Dixon. Elder Donaldson. Elder Harrison. 
Elder Farmer, Dr. Marianne Williams, Kojo Kamal, um, Elder Kojo, uh, Tony Clark, Pastor Yusuf Weston, Jeremiah Tappan, Terrell Dunbar, Jamon Jones, I'm missing somebody. Mark Walsh. We call on our ancestors. We lift up our glass, we say our shame. From there, we toast this moment. The day is a moja. It's a day of unity, truth, mentalism. It's the day of Quojo and Adwa. We toast and we say our shame. We move from there and we salute our, uh, our children, our children's children, on to infinity. We toast and we say, Shay, we toast them now so they toast us in the future. Last but not least, I toast you. Any of the struggles that you have that, that, that are going on, you lift up your glass, man. Ask your ancestors for help. You know what I'm saying? Ask your creator, but ask your, ask your ancestors as well. You know what I'm saying? Get it. Get that energy. Use the energy. So we lift it up and we say, I say, I say, I say. I wish you peace, power, joy, and 100 years. Hmm. Hmm. Kind of like biting into a peach. A little musty, though. Hmm. Hmm. You know what could make this better? That's right, we got those ambrosia. Y'all y'all notice I ain't got no I ain't got no brownies. I ain't got no cookies. I I family. I cut into the out this. I tore it up. I tore it up. You know, I you know, I you know, I, I did it wrong. I I ain't gonna lie. Peace fam. And that bread seems to get better with each time I eat it after dinner. Hey, man. Hey, I'm telling you. And make sure you look up the health benefits of sourdough. See, that is it's a it, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a fermenting piece that we lost. Right. This is how we used to make bread in ancient times. You know what I'm saying? The, and, and it's it's it, it, it's um. It's something in wheat, nuts, seeds that by us allowing them to ferment or allowing them to sprout, I think it's called phytic acid, that when we allow the process of fermentation or the process of soaking and allowing them to sprout, we get rid of this acid. The phytic acid stops our body from being able to absorb the the minerals and the vitamins that are in the um the the seeds like the wheat or the the the, the all the nuts all of the nuts that we eat peanuts include peanuts and all we got to allow them to sprout in order for us to really get the effect because really what a lot of us only getting is that when we eat these nuts we only getting the fiber when these nuts when you really look at them they're basically seeds and when you allow them to grow or allow them to sprout just a little bit, they release the ashe that's in them. It's, it's crazy, man. But I'm only going <laughs> What is it about sourdough that makes it problematic for women? I don't even... I haven't run into... Anything where they talk about it being problematic for women. Um, if anything, see, because actually I would think it would be better for them because the yeast is a wild variety of yeast. 
And if they can't eat sourdough bread, more than likely they can't eat regular bread. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I mean, yeast, but you can't escape yeast. I mean, shit. I mean, you walk outside and take a breath. This shit, yeast. Yeast and back, the shit is everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So. So maybe it's the wild variety of yeast. I don't know. I don't know. So. And they might not just like the sour flavor. But you see mine wasn't that sour, right? Because I took care of that, right? You see it wasn't sour. It get, it get better with time. And. Shoot, man. So let's let's see how this. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. All right, YouTube. I mean, all right, Facebook. I'm about to go and do my YouTube, even though this has been long enough. Damn, I might just do one video today. <laughs> all right, fam. All right, peace, Facebook.